Hi, I'm Val Hart in San Antonio, Texas, founder of Val Hart and Friends at ValHart.com. Welcome to The Real Dr. Doolittle Show, the show for animals and the people who love them. I've been called a real-life Dr. Doolittle many times in my career as an expert animal communicator, behaviorist, pet psychic, and master healer. My mission and passion is to improve the lives of animals the world over by helping humans learn how to speak their language, how to understand their viewpoints, and heal. After all, our love of animals helps us be better humans, and the more balanced and healthy we are, the more balanced and healthy they can be, too. Be sure and look for my CDs on iTunes, and to find out more about my work and to receive your free Quick Start Animal Talk course, just go to my website at valhart.com. While you're there for a limited time, you can also apply for a complimentary Happy Animal Assessment Session. And if you want to learn how to be your own Dr. Doolittle, check out the world's first complete animal communication made easy system available now on my website at valhart.com. Thank you and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Val Hart, the real Dr. Doolittle. And today I'm talking with Deborah King. She is a master healer and a teacher. And interestingly enough, she was a successful attorney in her 20s when she received a diagnosis of cancer and that sent her on a search for truth that radically changed her life. She was unwilling to undergo invasive surgery, so she turned to alternative medicine and experienced an amazing remission at the hands of a healer. Along the way, she conquered the alcohol and drug addiction she had used to bury an abusive childhood, and she left the corporate arena for the mysterious world of healers, sages, and shamans. Deborah's mastered ancient and modern healing systems and has ultimately, ultimately developed a powerful healing technique of her own. She's combined her personal history and her wisdom, and she's written the national bestseller, Truth Heals. What You Hide Can Hurt You, which explores a powerful relationship between the suppression of painful emotions and their impact on our health and our happiness. And her newest book, which is what we're going to talk about today, is Be Your Own Shaman, Heal Yourself and Others with 21st Century Energy Medicine. Deborah, welcome to the show. I'm so glad you're here with us today. Oh, thanks so much, Val. Delighted to be here. Wonderful. I I know you travel all over the world. You've helped thousands of people transform their lives. You do experiential workshops. You do training courses. Oh, my God. Oh, and you even host a popular weekly Hay House radio show. That is so cool. Yeah, no, I have a lot of fun. You do. You do. You're really having uh-huh. fun. Um, let's just tell people your website so they can go see that if they're if they're at a computer. It's DebraKingCenter dot com, D E B O R A H K I N G Center dot C O M. And now let's just jump right into it. So how did you? How did you? How did this all come about? Can you tell us a little more about that? Well, I can. And. Um, and A lot of your listeners will think, oh, that sounds so much like my life. So (laughs) I was in my 20s, and I thought everything was just fine, and I was a um, corporate attorney on the fast track, uh, very business-oriented. And one day when I was 25, I woke up with cancer, and I was like, Mm. hmm, I wonder what caused that. Yeah, It seemed to me there there had to be some personal involvement of some kind, and Mm -hmm. I stepped off of my own life for just a moment, and actually look back at it, and I was not in a, I was not the self-reflective type uh-huh. back then, okay. and I was truly <laughs> really horrified. I looked at my life and I thought, oh my God, I'm not in touch with myself at all. I've been band-aiding all my emotions with whatever I could get my hands on, yeah. whatever works. You know, I used all the typical coping mechanisms. The um, I, I used alcohol and Valium and. Um, mm. Uh, I had an eating disorder. I, you know, I, I, I was into extreme dieting. I mm. was into extreme sports. Whatever would uh, mask my emotions. Mm. So I thought, Oof. well, you know, maybe, maybe I need to get in touch. So I began yeah. by um, the first thing I did was learn to meditate. And at the same time, I joined a, um, a nearby 12-step program and got a handle on my addictions and you know I got a ton of clarity very quickly Mm -hmm, between mm -hmm. between those two um, um, tools meditation and and 12-stepping and you know and 12-step programs also get you back in touch with source and I had really disconnected myself from that yes 
Yeah, and then I started journaling, and I really got in touch with my emotions in that way, and then I decided to dip my toe in the alternative medical realm, and I knew nothing of it, and this was more than 25 years ago. So, wow. you know, it wasn't as prominent or available as it is today or yeah. or as acceptable. Yes. And so I started looking around and trying out a little here and there, and the next thing I knew, I met an, an energy healer, which seemed very, very fringy to me. Mm-hmm. I was quite skeptical, and I had a couple of sessions, and I had this amazing remission from cancer. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So oh, I was like, well, hmm, where'd the cancer go? What made mm-hmm. it come in the first place? What could yeah. I do to change that dynamic? Yeah. You know, could I reproduce this for other people? Yeah. Um, and I was really intrigued, and it, it put me on a whole new path. And here, flash forward 25 years, here we are. I've been wow. everywhere, Val. I've been all around the world. I've studied with all the major traditions, including um, I spent 10 years with the esoteric Christian healers. Mm. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I've had quite a varied background. I've worked with a lot with shamanic traditions. I've spent a lot of time with um, the uh, Tensegrity, which are the followers of Carlos Castaneda. I've mm, worked a lot with John of God. I've been around. Wow. Yes, you have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Wow. Oh, man. So let's talk about what energy medicine actually is. So how well, would you describe that, or how how can you explain you know, it? I can. If you think about it, we're, if you think about it, energy is all around us. We're surrounded by it. It's infrared. It's X-ray. It's mm-hmm. it, it's everything. And um, medicine is a factor that we use to treat disease. So in this case, the energy is the medicine. Well said. So the energy itself, which is all of source, it's what everything is created of, the energy itself is the medicine. That's right. Yes, exactly. I like that. I like that. You know, so many people, they think, you know, the pill is the medicine, the ointment is the medicine, the, you know, something like that is the medicine. But the truth is, like you just said, the energy itself is the medicine. Well done. Okay. And so then the question becomes, where's the energy coming from? You know, is it coming from you? Is it coming from outside of you? And, and that's been the heart of my work. Okay. Got it. So uh, let's talk about shamanism. So um, you, you, a lot of your work, especially your book, Be Your Own Shaman, uh, let's talk about that for a moment. So how do shamans work with energy? How is that different from allopathic medicine? What, and can anyone become a shaman? So let's talk about that for a moment. Well, what a shaman has learned to do is how to work with energy. Essentially, what they've done is they've become a clear channel so that they can access energy that's around them, universal energy, and they've learned how to connect with that energy, transmit that energy, and direct that energy to other people. Okay. Sounds complicated. Um, it, It isn't. I think we're all natural born healers and can really learn to do this very easily. Yeah. Yes. I I believe you're you're right. Um I that's certainly what I teach also. And you know, I think our animals, you know, the our show uh, is is for animal lovers, which all of us are very interested in in our animals, and they are also natural healers. Right. They are. And they are. in fact, I have a chapter in Be Your Own Shaman that's mm-hmm. devoted to uh, the subject of how to heal children and animals. It's, it's actually quite similar, as you probably know. Yes, oh, I love that. Thank you. Good. Okay, so anyone can become a shaman. We're all already doing it. We're all energy beings anyway. And so when we go to energy as our medicine, then things can start changing and shifting. They can, and a lot of it comes from you, you know, you yourself attracting energy to your own energy system because we're in constant dynamic interchange with our environment energy right. through our chakras which is uh, just a, a sanskrit word that means wheel that uh, is um, the way the representative way that we look at the human energy field because it does seem to have these wheels that pull energy in and send energy out mm-hmm. so constant hopefully constant dynamic interchange with our environment right right and if that stops then we stop <laughs> If it stops, that's when we get sick. No kidding. Because, yeah. And here's why. Here's why it stops. Okay. This is the this is the critical thing, and this was the, the heart of my my original work was when we don't express our emotions, mm-hmm. when we don't process them, 
when we don't have closure on things, when we say, oh, I'm over my bitter, bitter divorce, but we're really not, mm-hmm. or I, oh, I love my job, but really we hate it and we're grinding through it every day. Mm-hmm. What we're doing is we're taking our emotions and we're pushing them down somewhere and not acknowledging them, mm-hmm. not acknowledging yeah. them. That's yeah. what I was doing, ah. you see, and that's why I got so sick. Yes. So what I help people do is locate their emotion, honor them, don't beat yourself up, don't criticize yourself. It's okay, just you know, get in touch with yourself. And if your um, sister drives you up the wall or you just can't stand to be around some family member, mm-hmm. avoid. Honor your feelings. Don't say, don't, you know, I'm not a good person. It's who you are. And mm-hmm. maybe you'll change later, maybe you won't. Mm-hmm. But by honoring it and acknowledging it, you get in touch with it, and then you're free to change if you choose to. Yes. But what we don't know, we can't change. Right, right. Yeah, so self-awareness is the key. I, I like that. Self-awareness is the key, being more consciously aware of who we really are, honoring and respecting who we really are, making powerful choices for ourselves that empower us to express who we really are. Yeah, All of that clears away negative energy, um, suppression of self, which is deadening, right? It's uh, suppressive is the whole concept of, right. of stopping, uh-huh. you know, st- don't yeah. feel that. How can you stop feeling what you actually feel? You know, yeah, <laughs> and, and I, don't, exactly, I, I don't want people to stop feeling it. I, here, here's, here's the classic example. Uh-huh. So our beloved family member dies. We yeah. have a funeral 48 hours later on a Thursday, mm-hmm. and they say, well, we'll see you back at work on Monday. Yeah, that's our culture. We're, we're telling people essentially. We're telling ourselves, mm-hmm. "Hmm, we only have three days to process a death." Mm-hmm. Good grief, that's impossible. Yes. So people and people need ceremony and ritual to help them process big moments in their lives. It could be a death. It could be a divorce. We don't have anything like that for divorce, and we need something mm-hmm. like that. Yes, we so do. People, yeah. So people can yeah. really honor the good of the relationship and let go of the part that didn't work out so well, yeah. thank the universe and move on. But see, we, we've left our whole, culturally, we're all kind of left hanging. Yes, you're right. Mm-hmm. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, yes. You know, one of, one of the things I do in my work is to help people find the closure that they need, the completion, the peace. You know, and, and Wonderful. That's, a, that's a deeper process than just, well, oh, and that's quite a, what a Yeah, and that's quite a gift you're giving them. Yeah, and I love that you bring up the point about having ceremony, ritual, um, a path work, you know, a pathway to process and allow ourselves to feel what we need to feel so that we can make peace with it. We can let go. We can move on. You know, I, I think we've always been, you know, heard the phrase, what we resist persists. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, great so one. Yeah, yeah, so if we're resisting ourselves, resisting feeling what we're feeling, then guess what? We prolong it. You know, it gets stuck in the pipeline, and and then all the other stuff gets stuck in behind it. And pretty sure we're – pretty soon we're all oh. stuck. <laughs> we're just totally stuck. Oh, so so let's talk about clearing away negative energy. So so let's, let's talk about that a minute. So what do you do? Let's talk about negative energy and how you clear it, how we pick it up. What what can you tell us about that part? Well, there are so many different ways to uh, address energy and clear it. Um, some of the some of the uh, well, let, let's talk about negative energy for a moment because that's okay. one of the easiest things for people to spot. You know, there isn't a one of us, Val, that doesn't know when we've just had a little conversation with somebody or an email exchange or a phone message. You know, doesn't doesn't take personal contact and the next thing you know no the next thing you know you don't feel good and you say to yourself oh what was that they were in a bad mood or maybe they were an energy vampire that Mm -hmm. particular day or you know it could be almost anything so um, there are some things you can do for that low level uh, negative energy and I've given it a really scientific name I call it slime (laughs) <laughs> and what I would encourage your listeners to do is pick up a hard copy of my book, Be Your Own Shaman. Mm-hmm. You can get you can get it Amazon for less than lunch, mm-hmm. and just you know grab a copy um, and read all about how to clear themselves of slime. There's a simple way to do it at home that involves taking a bath. Ah. And my other suggestion to your listeners would be to lope on over to Facebook and like my page, Deborah King. Okay. 
and it's D E B O R A H. And but just by liking it, it'll open you to all the apps I have there that are other suggestions about how to deal with negative energy. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Yeah. So um liking you on Facebook, Deborah King. Um, and you've got all a bunch of other suggestions and stuff for clearing slime. <laughs> but I always think of Ghostbusters. You know, you have to think of Ghostbusters when the, uh-huh, the exactly. ghost, you know, uh, ran uh-huh. over one of them and uh, left them all green and slimy. You know, that really kind of, it's kind of how it feels. You know, it feels goopy. It feels ugh. it's uh-huh. like a a coating on your energy field. And and you're right. I, I was you were saying that I was just remembering something that happened to me just yesterday. Uh, something through email, and it kind of pissed me off, and I felt attacked, and, I, and, and I'm just I'm thinking about it. I'm just going, uh, yeah, I guess I did. I just got slimed. So, yeah, time to clear, time to clean. Take a bath. Love that. Thank you. You mentioned something else about energy vampires. Let's talk about that for just a minute. So what do you mean when you say an energy vampire? And I bet some people are going, oh, wow, I want to know about more about that. Well, an energy vampire is someone who's made a, 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 somewhat of a habit out of learning how to suck energy from other people. I, I think we all know it when we feel it. Yes, it's we, not I, we, yeah. I was going to say, I bet people are thinking of people who do this to them already. Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> totally. There, there's so many things that you can do to ward that off. Uh, you know, from avoidance to mm-hmm. um, I always counsel people, keep an object between you and another person if their oh. energy is not good for you. I'm not kidding, you know. Uh-huh. Car, cars make, make are, are great objects for that. You know, stand on the other side of the car, stand on the other side of the kitchen counter. Okay. Um, you know, give yourself, really, give yourself some distance. Remember, energy travels in a straight line. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So there's so many ways we can protect ourselves from energy vampires, and I do cover that extensively in Be Your Own Shaman. Very good. Yes, I think that's really important to know. So energy vampires aren't the ones that are sucking on our neck and drinking our blood, um, but they're actually drinking our energy. And we can. I love the technique of just keeping something between us as a block um, or a shield or a, something like that. And of course, the first thing is to know they exist and know that you have permission to protect yourself. You know, we're not walking buffets for energy vampires. They don't, you know, they don't have permission to suck our life force from us. Well done. Good. Okay. So let's let's talk about energy medicine and how we can reprogram our body um, in a lot of different ways. So I know um, uh, you talk a bit about losing weight with energy medicine and helping with health problems and uh, things like that. So let's, let's talk about that for a minute. I think that's really fascinating. Well, one of the most, speaking of losing weight, one of the most common things that I notice, and I think it is more pronounced with women than men, okay, is the tendency to put weight on around the second chakra area, which is just below the waist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really a common problem, and it comes from not clearing emotions that are stored in that area. And one of the most prevalent ones for women, of course, is fear. Mm-hmm. They pick up this habit when they're little. I mean, let's face it, Val, uh, little girls don't feel very powerful mm-hmm. vis-a-vis the re- the rest of the planet. They're yeah. like the you know the, as far as humans go, um, you know uh, we don't get much lower. Yeah. And 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 as adults, we don't really reverse that dynamic. We still have it in our cellular memory and our mm-hmm. it's you know it's a, it's a quite a habit. So what we do is we store all our memories in the second chakra area. It's a really good place to put fear. Mm-hmm. And the next thing you know, you know you've got thirty or forty pounds or 20 to deal with because we, we just put on extra layers to protect ourselves from the kind of emotions we've stored. So what I encourage people to do is really clear mm-hmm. all their emotions, journaling, 12-stepping, okay. um, meditating. These are all tools for clearing emotions and staying clear, and it really does help. Well, and, and you're talking, you're saying, um, yeah. Uh, I've got so much to say. Um, so journaling, let's talk about journaling a minute. I, I know that's a, a technique that you use in a lot of different ways. Can you describe what it is and how you actually use it? Let's, let's talk about that. You can. I, I really like journaling because it doesn't cost anything and you can do it whenever you want. So yeah. you grab pen and paper or your laptop. Eat, both work because the way journaling works is it helps us access our unconscious. So, again, we store all this stuff. I ask you, how are you? You say, I'm fine. You don't know you've stored it. Mm. Um, 
and it's, it's causing you trouble. So, But if you would spend even five or ten minutes a day with that pen and paper or that laptop, and just write stream of consciousness. Pick a topic like, oh, that phone call I had with that woman yesterday. You're, it's still on your mind. And just write as fast as you can. No holds barred. You're not writing for someone else. No posing. No, no spell checking. No reading back. You just scrawl it out. You spit it out as fast as you can. And that's processing the emotion. In the process, you'll probably find out how you really feel about it. Yeah. <laughs> how angry you really are or how... Uh-huh you know, how afraid you really were or how embarrassed you are or whatever your emotion is, and it gives you a chance to literally let go of it. Ah. So that's, why, that's why journaling works. It's very powerful. Okay. I love what you Also, Go ahead. And well, also, Val, in, in Be Your Own Shaman, I teach a series of shamanic exercises that go beyond journaling. Okay. Also, you can do at home that don't cost anything, that only take as little as five or ten minutes, that allow you to disconnect from the energy of other people that is really troubling, you know, because what happens is we cord one another energetically. This could this could be loving relationships. It could be your mother, your father, you know, your sibling, your partner, and yet we're getting a lot of negativity at the same time. And what I teach people to do is some some ancient uh, techniques that are from the shamans of Mexico. They're about 5,000 years old, and it allows you to disconnect from that negative energy Keep the good, return the negative, and at the same time, take back the energy that you lost in the interchange, in the exchange that you left at the scene. Because we leave energy at the scene. Mm, okay. Yeah, so these are very powerful techniques that I'm teaching in the book. Yeah. Can you give us a story about it to help us understand? Well, I can tell you um, uh, how how it worked for me was okay. just phenomenal. I remember being taught this technique okay. was one of the very first things I learned. So I was back in my 20s, and I could tell within a matter of a week that you, you, I felt like a different person. I felt lighter. Mm. Spe- speaking of which, I started to lose weight. So this is another oh. technique that, yeah, that really works in with that. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, really amazing um, techniques. Okay, okay. So what I've done is I've, I've traveled the world, I've studied with all of these various seers until the point I started to teach yeah. myself. Yeah. And I picked I picked things that I knew worked. When it would work, I would bring it home and say, okay, this works, let's use it. Yes, I understand. Whew. Okay, so do you have anything specific that you do beyond this for uh, when, when you're stressed, when you're feeling really stressed or overwhelmed? Uh, is journaling what you, the tool of choice, or do you use something else? Well, I meditate every day, and that's probably oh, okay. why I don't get very stressed. Oh. <laughs> um, everybody, everybody needs a good, strong, meditative face. And if your listeners don't know how to meditate, or what most people say to me when I say, I'm not picking up much of a base on you, they say, well, I work at meditating, I try. And I'm like, oh, my God, it shouldn't uh, be work. So uh, if, there, you know, if, if you don't have a format that's working for you, Swing over to my website, Mm -hmm. DebraKingCenter.com. Click on the Want to Learn to Meditate button. I will come straight into your living room. I will teach you how to meditate. I will give you your own personal mantra that will take you through the gap between your thoughts. So there's these little tiny, can't see them, little tiny gaps between our thoughts. If you can find a way to get through it, Mm -hmm. that gap and that mantra that I give you will do that. It will take you into this vast field of energy it's the universal field. It's God. It's you know. It's all around us. And once you access that and and um, loll about there for 20 minutes, having mm-hmm. no thoughts, mm-hmm. having no thoughts at all, mm-hmm. being disconnected from the mind, mm-hmm. you come back all recharged, refreshed. Mm-hmm. And and since you've been connected to universal thought, you come back with great ideas, of course, because yeah. you just tapped into the you've tapped into the big board. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Okay. So going to DebraKingCenter.com and look for Want to Learn How to Meditate. Yeah. And you, we can uh, access all of that. Thank you so much for making that available. Oh, well, I finally awesome just gift. gave up. I, I, for years I would send people emails and say, here's a meditation teacher in your city because you have to learn from a real life teacher. And they would email back and they go, oh, my God, I called those people and they're $2,500. And I'm like, you're kidding me. 
Uh-huh. Meditation needs to be freely accessible to everyone. Uh-huh. We're the only culture in history that has quit teaching our children how to access this important state. It's an actual state of consciousness. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, so sleeping is a state of consciousness. Waking, that's the state you and I are in right now. That's a state of consciousness. Mm-hmm. Dreaming, dreaming is, and so is meditation. But we've neglected teaching our children. And so many of us as adults have to learn. We just don't yes. know how. Exactly. Yeah. I know a lot of my students, you know, this is one of the things that really trips them up. You know, they're they're not practiced. They don't know how. They, um, it's uncomfortable. They, I mean, they get, there's confusion. There's just confusion. So I love that you're doing that. And you're, that you brought up the point about teaching our children to meditate. Brilliant. Mm-hmm. The other thing is that our animals meditate. They do. <laughs> we can learn, and we can I, learn and, from and them. I have to. They do, indeed. I, I know that so much because I used to live on a farm, mm-hmm. and I would watch the llamas especially. They kneel uh-huh. at sunrise and sunset, and they spend about an hour in meditation at each point of the day. They do. That's why they're so calm and happy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I do tell people, please put the dog and the cats out of your meditation room, though, because mm-hmm. God love them. They will grab your meditative energy. They will hone right in on it and go, oh, that feels really good. We like that. <laughs> Yeah, so you do have to put them outside the door. In a happy place. Um, and the cats, I have a double door. Ah. Otherwise, they'll scratch. So, <laughs> I don't want to be part of that. I can't they like the, the door. They want the. Yeah. They like the energy. I, I remember. Do. I remember looking outside on my deck one time. I have a. I had a uh-huh. um, long-haired uh, tabby cat named Tuffy Tiger, and uh, I looked. I just glanced outside, and she was stretched out from. I mean, like. Tip to toe, you know, stretched out, laying on the deck, feeling, and good. feeling <laughs> fabulous. And I and I tuned into her subtly, you know, I checked her energy, uh-huh. and it was huge. And I mean, she, you could feel the purring and the flow uh-huh. and the power. And you know, I connected in, and I asked her. I said, you know, Tuffy Tiger, oh my God, you know, what are you doing? This is so beautiful. And she said, I'm meditating, but I'm blessing my space. I'm connecting with oh, nature. Wow. I'm at That'd one. Be I'm at one with my world, yeah, and I she know. Said, yeah, she said, you know, if 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 you humans would learn how to do this on a regular basis, yeah. you wouldn't be sick. She'd be so much happier. <laughs> She'd be so much happier too. Uh, yeah, yeah. I love. Anyway, that's awesome. Ah, so let's talk about a few more, more topics. I, I love you. You you say something here about drama queens and how they drain us. Um, Want to talk about that for a minute? I'm almost out of time. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, hold on one second. I'd love to, but um, oh, oh. I know I have another uh, interview coming up. Oh, very good. No problem. Um, and this is um, in your book, and it's on your work. So let's uh, leave that for people to look into and find later. Um, okay. So everyone, go to Deborah King's website, DebraKingCenter.com, and get your copy of her book, Be Your Own Shaman. Heal yourself another. No, uh, let me just correct one thing there, Val. Not to my website to get the book. Oh, I'm sorry. Go to Amazon to get the book. Very Amazon good. Or, or Barnes and Noble, either one. But Amazon mm-hmm. has them at a bargain, bargain price. And be sure to get a hard copy. Okay. Remember, I I impressed energy into the book, so you Ooh. want you don't. This is the one book you don't want in electronic form. You want a hard copy. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so it's much. A, it's a shamanic technique, and I can teach you how to impress objects. Uh, with with energy, by the way. Brilliant. Um, okay. Yeah, okay. No. Well, I definitely want. I want more. I mean, I, I would love to have another hour or or ten of your time. <laughs> oh, wonderful! No, I would love to but, come back on. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm an animal lover. I I devote a a, a week um, every um, seven or eight radio shows just just to animals. I'm awesome. Oh my God! Such an animal lover. I'm with yeah. you. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah, for your important work. Thank you for the gift of Thank you for yours. Planet. Yeah, oh, oh my god. It really helping. Helping, helping. So, okay. So, thank, thank you, you so Val. much. Uh, we'll, we'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the show. For more information or to listen to other podcasts, go to valhart.com forward slash blog. And if you're someone who values a non-invasive, holistic solution to resolving problems with your dogs, cats, and horses, and you want better behaved, healthier, and happier animals, 
Just go to my website at bellheart.com to apply for a complimentary Happy Animal Assessment session. And be sure and remember to look for my CDs on iTunes. Learning how to talk with animals is fun and will change your life. So while you're there at my site, get my free Quick Start Animal Talk course and check out the world's first complete animal communication made easy system. May the love of animals bless you, teach you, inspire you, heal you, and reconnect you to the circle of life. Mm-hmm.